So secrets management is something that you really, really have to pay a lot of attention to because a lot of people still put passwords into their systems. A connection string to a database is a secret. Right. You can't put that into your database. You have to use a secrets management system like Azure Key Vault or HashiCorp's Vault capabilities, whatever it might be, to secure those things so that they only are used when needed and are not in source code. Oh, good. You're back because we're about to talk about a really important topic of secret management and how you take that into consideration as part of development. So let's go right back to the architects to continue our conversation. Yeah. So there are two points I would add. So first of all, um, David, you might remember uh, our colleague, um, uh, Michael Howard, wrote the Bible for mm -hmm. writing secure code. And the right. book is called Writing Secure Code. Right. Right. Um, right. And a lot of what you rattled off is still relevant. Obviously, the threat landscape has grown, uh, but the basic uh, capabilities that he describes and approaches are still very valid. I do want to push uh, a little bit on something that Eric has mentioned now twice, which is passwords and stuff like that. Broaden it out to secrets management. So secrets management is something that you really, really have to pay a lot of attention to because a lot of people still put passwords into their systems. Um, a connection string to a database is a secret. Right. You can't put that into your database. You have to use a secrets management system like Azure Key Vault or HashiCorp's Vault capabilities, whatever it might be, uh, to secure those things so that they only are used when needed and are not in source code. Uh, the, one of the big attack vectors that um, various uh, nation state guys have used is source code repositories. And SharePoint sites often are used as source code repositories because they on, contain wikis right. where people are writing information and um, sometimes share passwords because it's just a development site. It's not a problem. Well, it is a problem. So don't think just production code. Also think your dev center or your development process, testing and so forth. Those are sen sensitive, secure systems and uh, key uh, passwords, uh, connection strings, other uh, connect connecting models are secrets. They are not allowed in source code ever. Um, and that's really important uh, to start thinking about. So writing secure code is something I would recommend anybody who runs to write code to read um, yeah. and internalize. And then obviously uh, maybe there's updated books that I haven't seen yet that might be worthwhile for us to reference uh, for this. And then think through sequence management as a very basic model and then obviously the stuff, David, that you rattled off with input output checking and stuff. Like yeah, that. that's. I mean, just the basic stuff I remember being checked on. I, I have over my bookshelf something called Building Secure and Reliable Systems, you know, which came out which came out of Google. It's another fun book if you if you if you want to get into that from sort of the operations perspective. Yep. Okay, I we have one last question, and I'm going to take it totally out of left field. And we haven't had a provocative question uh, this season yet. Um, here's my provocative question for you. Okay, cool. You're all saying that AI systems are cool because they can tell you not only like you have a problem, but what to do about it. We're trading these systems on secure code or not? Like like the training of the, of, of, you know, like like how do you feel good about the fact it can tell you about things when it's, when it's training base, if we assume it's out to like all of GitHub, let's just say, or something like that, isn't necessarily the most secure code. So, uh, so why do you trust it? I think it's gotta be like any type of LLM or model. You have to train it with, uh, by showing it what's good, not uh -huh. just showing it the entire universe and say in an unsupervised fashion, go figure out what's good or, you know, let me know what you think. Certainly that's gotta be part of it, but you have to basically be able to show the model um, what are the most up-to-date uh, behaviors that it might not even be aware of uh, that just happened an hour ago to what are the good seco secure and coding practices. Um, and so I think a combination of what these vendors actually provide in this space uh, kind of continually, that, that's, their, that's their whole job is to have a model-based, inference-based way to identify patterns uh, and be able to say, this is an anti-pattern, this is bad, but also, somebody just invented yesterday a new security hack or a new vulnerability 
And you also need to be able to have that up to date. So I think it's a combination of, of accommodating for those two things. Definitely unsupervised training on code bases is probably not the best way to go. Well, we talked about it in our previous season about AI. We talked yeah. about a technique called fine tuning. Um, and part of what you said is correct, meaning the systems like GitHub Copilot get trained on open source that has the right um, license to associated that you can use it for learning. Right. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, as part of that process, there's also screening uh, that the code is actually uh, is actually five stars or whatever the rating is that needs to happen. But then there's constraints that are being built into the system using fine tuning and other techniques uh, to effectively go and make sure that when guidance is given or code is written, that that follows specific models and specific patterns. So I would say it's a combination of the training, but as also about how the uh, systems like Copilot, GitHub Copilot actually work. Uh, and they also don't use just a single model. They use actually multiple models uh, to, to a degree, make sure that the best of the uh, worlds come together in the guidance that this system ultimately gives. It, it's certainly interesting to me to think about the curation aspect right of this as as well the people that are doing this so like you can't so if you're if so kids out there if you're going to go build your own this is harder than it looks and this is why is what i want to say and and, yep. and with that with that i think um let's tell you what let's we got lots to talk about so why don't i thank you both uh for taking the time to talk about this stuff with me thank you all for watching us and i hope people will join us for future episodes of armchair architects as part of the azure essentials show mm -hmm.